Hey guys, welcome to the next episode of Tinkering with Tiny Humans. We have my tiny human, Elena, here today. And you can see her beautiful face tats that she got from the fall festival. She's a pirate. Yeah, but it's wearing off a little bit. Um, so we're going to try to help uh, Lainey's brother today. So Jake lost the combination to his super top secret diary. And he doesn't know the combination, but we're going to try to help him with that. Do you think that would be something we could do, Lainey? Yeah. Yeah, okay. He so, locked it in his diary. He locked it in his diary. That is... <laughs> That's a bad place to put a combination, huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, well, why don't you put these on, please? Okay. And we are going to help out Jacob with his diary that is locked. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, no. no? <laughs> what? I think it'll open it. No. no, I do. I think it'll open no. it. We should not do that? No. Okay, fine. All right. All right. All right. Let's not do that. All right, so let's find another way that doesn't involve power tools, okay? Like pulling on the lock and trying to... Yeah, I don't think we should use power tools. That's, that's a really good idea. Yeah, right. pulling on the lock and trying to twist it. So... No! We'll no, just not that either! <laughs> what? This would totally work. No! <laughs> no? We are picking the lock. Okay, we're going to pick the lock. Actually, what we're going to do is we are going to manipulate the lock. Do you know what the word manipulate means? Nope. Um... Well, it can be a bunch of things, but for mechanisms and stuff, it's using the power of touch to figure out what's going on inside. So we are going to manipulate this combination lock open. And there's two, two ways to open stuff. Um, there's destructive methods and non-destructive methods. What do you think those two would be? Destructive. Yeah, those would be destructive. We're not going to do that. So we're going to do non-destructive, and there's some subsets of that that are called surreptitious. Yes, yeah, surreptitious or covert entry, and those are ones that don't leave any evidence of uh, someone trying to get into it. But we'll talk about that another day. Today, we just want to open this up so that it's not destroyed when we're done. Mm -hmm. So I am going to show you what is actually inside of this lock. This is a three-wheel combination lock. Um, it's actually a permutation lock. Combination means the right pattern of things or the right number of elements. So for instance, the combination of one, two, three and the combination of three, two, one are the same. But permutations care about the order, and the order of the numbers matters on this lock. It will not open with three, two, one if the real code is one, two, three. So this is a permutation lock. And inside, even though no one calls it a permutation lock, do they? That would just be silly. Have you ever heard anyone call this a permutation lock? Well, it is, and now you know better. All right, so inside of this lock is a bunch of gates are a bunch of gates. And see these little square openings there? Yeah. Yeah. So there's a cylinder, and then there's these little bumpy parts, and those bumpy parts will only fit through when it is lined up to the correct digit, and the correct digit corresponds to that gate. So in order for this to work, you have to have this square lined up with that square lined up with that square lined up in order for it to open. And that's what happens inside of here. So instead of this being a rod that gets removed, it is the part of this shackle. So this part is called the shackle. You don't know the code of this one. How do you know? Well, Jake said it, but we don't know what it is. So we're gonna have to figure it out. Um, so here, check this out. This one though, will let you change the combination yourself. And on this lock, I have it set to one. So when you set the combination to one, it lets you open it and pull this little cap off. And inside, you can see this little notch that's red. That is where the wheel has to be in order for it to open. If it's right there, it doesn't work. If it's right there, it doesn't work. But if all the red notches are lined up, it does work. And the way that we change it is we just make whatever digit we want line up with that red mark. So if I want the code to be 0022, I just put it on two and two and put the cap on. And now the code is 0022. So the way this works inside is when you know the old combination and you flip the shackle around and you press it down, it basically does this inside. It takes the wheel off of its little part and then when you spin it to the new combination and you let go of the shackle, it sets the new combination. So once we get this open, we can set it to a new combination that we won't forget. Sound like a plan? Yeah, like zero, zero, zero. That is not a very secure combination, but we could set <laughs> it to zero, zero, zero. Okay. All right, so that was just wants. to show you how it works inside, but we're gonna, we're gonna do a little experiment. So I am going to do the first challenge. Right now the combination is five, six, zero. I am going to take the shackle, 
turn it to 90 degrees, push it down, and rotate it. Now, any combination that we set will become the new combination. I would like you to set the combination, and don't let me see it, and then flip that shackle over and it'll set the combination for us. I don't think we need these anymore. Yeah, because we're not using power tools. We're not using power tools, no. That would yeah. be crazy. Yeah, yeah. I think I, think I should make it to Okay. And keep the combination in your brain in case I can't remember or can't figure out how to open it, okay? Okay. So the way that we're going to do this to manipulate this combination lock open is we're going to put some tension on the shackle. <clears throat> we're going to pull on it. And I that's going to make... Driver. What's that? Screwdriver. Well, yeah, if it was on a building, you would need a screwdriver. But I'm going to use the screwdriver just to prevent my hands from hurting okay, as much. I'm going to it. What? I'll it. Okay. Well, just listen for a second, and then we can use the screwdriver. So I'm going to pull on the shackle, and that's going to make the internal parts touch each other. And when they touch each other, I may be able to feel where that notch and the gate lines up. And I think what you're going to find when you do it is one wheel always is harder to turn than the other ones. And that's because of manufacturing tolerances. Do you know what the word tolerances means? No. Tolerances is the difference between what is made and what someone wanted to be made on a mechanical drawing. So even if they wanted it to be made perfect so that all the pieces touch at the same time, because of little errors in machining or some of these parts are cast, they don't always work out that way. So you're always going to find that one wheel will bind up before the other one. So let's put the screwdriver through there, through the shackle. Yep. Yeah. I'll hold it. It's okay. I just want you to watch. So I'm going to use my other fingers and I'm going to push on the body of the padlock and I'm going to turn each of these wheels and I'm going to figure out which one is the hardest to turn. And right now this one is the hardest to turn. And what I'm going to try to feel for is a little click where the notch and the gate fall into each other. Sometime the manufacturer puts some fake ones in there that are called false gates and that makes it harder to pick. Um, but on this one there are not very many of them. Yeah, it's, well, it's not a knockoff, it's just that the quality of master padlocks have gone down precipitously over the years. Um, there's a lot of low quality master padlocks out there now. Jacob's is a knockoff. No, nah, it says master on it, it's just bigger than this one. I think I'm making some progress. So now that I set this first one on zero, it's making the other ones um, harder to turn. I'm changing Wait, my mind. Well, it's part of the process. And I know what it is. I know you know what it is, but I don't. I they do. Uh, oh, you showed it to him? Mm -hmm. hmm, cool. Not really. Kind of just did. That's got to be zero for the first one. It just has to be. So here's another way we can progress it. So I know the first one's zero because I felt it getting really hard. Uh, so I'm just going to go through each of these other digits and try all the combinations. Oh, zero, zero, yeah, zero. I, one, one, one. Two, two, I should two. have known you would do a silly combination. Yeah. So the way we did that is we started with the wheel that was the most difficult. We turned it until we felt a little clicky spot. And then when that made the other ones harder to turn, we knew that that was the correct digit. And then we worked our way down through all the combinations. Okay, just... Are you ready to try? Yeah. Or do you want me to do it one more time? Make one on there. I'll make one on there. Okay, I'll show them the code. I can't see it from here. No, you can't see it from here. All right, so there's that. There's that, uh-huh, maybe the light hitting it. All right. All right, Critter, you try. I will, I will apply the force so that your hands don't hurt, and you can turn the dials. Which one's harder to turn, the first one or the middle one? This one now. Okay. I think that it, it's seven. Okay. It's okay. I'm going to pull a little less hard in there because it seems like you're having a hard time. Now, I'm not trying to give it away, but I actually could hear it click on three when you were turning this. 
So feel, t try to turn three. It like it's, it's stuck on both sides between three. Do you feel that? Yeah. So I'm gonna give you one of the numbers and the last one is three. And I just didn't want you to like spend a lot of time on it cause you passed it up. But can you feel it now? How it like clicks into mm -hmm. place and then you can't turn it anymore? Yeah. All right, so now work on the first two ones. Well, it's not the hearing, it's the feeling. Go, go the other way. Yep, keep going. Is that one stuck? Yeah. Okay, now try to work the middle one. Oh, M gosh. Yeah, it's a You manipulated the combination lock. All right, let's work on Jake's. <laughs> we went through all that just for you to try to pull it open? You're a wackadoodle. <laughs> All right. No. So we talked about the shackle and manipulating it, which is feeling the parts inside, and non-destructive opening. What else did we yeah. talk about today? <laughs> destructive. Opening. Destructive opening. That's right. Yeah. And permutations versus combinations. So one, two, three, and three, two, one are the same combination of numbers, but one, no, two, three, and three, two, one are not the same permutation of numbers. Okay. I was just doing a recap. All right. You want to do this one yourself? Yeah. Okay. So you should be able to pull on the book and I'll just kind of keep my hand right here to keep it elevated for you. I do not know the combination to this one. So if you get stuck, I'll work on it a little bit with you. Can you do the, can you spin the wheels from the bottom so that people can see the combination that you're working on? It's the four. There's a four there. Okay. I know. What are you feeling? Nothing. Nothing? Right. Why'd you stop on two? Oh. <laughs> well, it seemed like it was getting stuck there. So, I mean, two might have been right. Okay, that's the second time you got stuck on two. So I'm really confident that first one is two. I would not mess with it again because it got stuck there twice. So I would work through those other two wheels. So tell me, do you feel anything on those last two wheels? Like, does it feel any it different? Feels like you can't move it. Okay. What about the middle one? It's like, it's easy to Easier. do. Easier? All right, since there's only 100 combinations on those last two, I want, to, I want you to try this. Set that one to zero, spin this one all the way around, and then make it one and spin this one all the way around, and you're going to progress out all the combinations that are left. Nope, don't bump this top one. You got to remember where you started at. Do you start at zero or three? I'll just start at one. Okay. Spin it all the way around. Spin the middle one through all of them, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then make the bottom one go. It's just my sweaty finger. Okay. Here, I'll, I'll do it with you. So I'll spin this one through all the combinations or all the digits, and then you increment the last one. So go make from zero to one. Okay. All right, make it two. Now the last one, two. Three. Four. Won't take that long. Oops. Five. Six. What were you doing on the camera? What were you pointing at me? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Two, one, six. Awesome. High five for awesomeness. I'm so proud of you. Great job. So we, we defeated these two locks. This one I'm going to set. This is going to be a challenge. So I'm going to set this lock for you. And if you can get this combination yourself, I will give you five dollars. Doesn't matter if you get it done today or in a week. If you get this combination open, I will give you five dollars. Sound like a plan? Yeah. Okay. You gonna work on it? You don't need my help. I bet you can do it. So every night you can work on it a little bit. I'll set this combination for you after the video is over, and uh, if you succeed, you get five bucks. Deal? Okay. So, was this a fun project? 
You know that this is a skill that you're only allowed to use for good powers and not for evil powers. Mm -hmm. So if yeah. a friend forgets something and they ask you to help, you're allowed to help, but you're not allowed to break into stuff using this technique, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now you know how to open some combination locks, and that one's going to be a little more challenging because it has some false gates in it. What was your favorite part about this project? When you tried to use the power tool. When I tried to use the power tool, and you stopped me. Yeah. We would have been done by now if you wouldn't have stopped me. <laughs> what was your least favorite thing about this project? That you use, that you try. Did I try to use? Is that the answer for every question? Yes. Yeah. Power tools? Okay. And what do you think we could have done differently or better? Not to use time? the power tool? Not to use the power tool. <laughs> this is not a very productive analysis, no, but I really appreciate you taking the time to do this with me. This was fun. All right, guys. So thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, if you'd be so kind, can you like and subscribe because Lainey and I would like to make some more um, videos with mom and Jake and ourselves. And uh, if you like and subscribe, it'll help us with view counts and maybe get us a little bit of money to buy some better equipment and uh, do some cool videos for to, us to share with you. So until next time, thank you so much and have a great day. Bye. Bye.